At a time when BMW is celebrating their 100 year anniversary, you would think a vehicle like the BMW i8 would be the ultimate halo car. But after driving it for a little over a week and on the tail end of driving the Acura NSX, it's been a little disappointing. In fact, the whole i brand has not exactly uh, been met with a lot of fanfare. The i3, a little overpriced at $44,000, not selling well, not to mention that we have record low fuel prices. The i8, at a time when there are a lot of really cool supercars in its price range of around $150,000, just doesn't have the chops with a zero to 60 time of 4.2 seconds. But nevertheless, it is a cool kind of techno geeks car because it does have this electric motor, but the electric motor only gets you about 14 miles of range. Let's take it for a drive and I'll tell you exactly what I think of it. The i8 is a true exotic sports car, but not in the traditional sense. What I mean by that is, you have a hybrid motor, you only have a three cylinder 1.5 liter turbo as your primary engine, but the combined powertrain net horsepower is 357, propelling the i8 to 60 miles an hour in just 4.2 seconds. That's not super fast by today's standards, considering a Corvette Z06, for example, will do that in less than three seconds for a lot less money. That's not why you buy the i8. The i8 is more of a statement car. Not only it looks great, but with the ability to drive on pure electric power, and you have four driving modes to let you manage that, you're kind of making a statement that you don't just need pure power all the time. Sometimes you want to be quiet. What we've seen with the Acura NSX is they actually have a quiet mode. That's what the electric motors take over and you're in super quiet uh, zero exhaust mode. The interior is surprisingly roomy. I think for a $140,000 car, they could have stepped it up a little bit more, maybe some higher quality materials. Uh, I'd like to see more engagement with the electronics. Maybe take a page from the GTR, for example. They could have put a performance data recorder, had a built-in map, let the owners have a little more fun with this car. You have a relatively small high definition instrument cluster, uh, but it is a lot of fun to play with it. It turns red when you go into sport mode, which is the mode we're in right now. Paddle shifters are extremely responsive. You get a nice exhaust note. Basically, all the checklist items you would want in a sports car. Only time will tell if this I division of BMW is going to be successful. The I3 has been met with some stiff competition. With a starting price of $44,000, they're not exactly flying off the shelves. Low gas prices aren't helping it either. The I8 is very limited and in its first years is going to do great. We'll see in the long run. There was supposed to be an I5 already introduced, but that's been delayed. We just don't know if a we just don't know if a performance company like BMW can deliver on the electric car promise. Like the i3, you have a carbon fiber shell, which is what you usually find in Formula One cars, McLaren, for example. What that does is provide a lot of stiffness and reduces a lot of the weight to make this a very lively performance car. As I was filling this vehicle at the gas station, the number one question people ask me is, I thought it was all electric. Well, it's not all electric. Go ahead and send all the hate mail you want. All I can tell you is it's a wonderful car, but there's a lot better out there, especially the Acura NSX. I'm Ron Dorn for the driver's seat. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.